So in order to find these, we're going to have to remind ourselves what we did on Friday. It feels like a long time ago, right? Um, so volume of a sphere. We are assuming that the planets are spherical for the purposes of this warm-up. So um, volume of a sphere, do you remember? Four-thirds pi r cubed. And remember, because spheres, um, when you do volume, volume is 3D, and so you have to cube r because it's 3D. You want it to be three-dimensional. So r times r times r makes it 3D. So um, we can put our answer in terms of pi. If y'all would like, what'd you get for the first one? Let's not do it as a fraction because that's a really ugly fraction. Let's do it as a decimal and let's round to the nearest whole number. Round to the nearest whole number. So I got 350 pi million meters. Not millimeters, million meters. <laughs> So um, we probably wouldn't put the volume of the earth in cubic meters. That probably wouldn't make sense, but that's, that's what we were given, so we'll take it. Um, how many earths would fit inside Jupiter? So what you are not doing is you are not doing 71.5 divided by 6.4. And that's actually what we're going to learn in our lesson today. You can't divide the radiuses because the radiuses are 1D. And volume, filling something is volume. And volume is 3D. So you can't just divide the radiuses. So I do need you to find the volume and divide them. How many Earths would fit inside Jupiter? Let me know what you get. So just to simplify this, if we're doing volume divided by volume, if we're going to do 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by 4 thirds pi r cubed, let's just make this as simple as we can. When you divide those, the 4 thirds are going to cancel. The pi's are going to cancel. So when you're doing this problem, what are you really doing? You're doing r cubed well, sorry, that one doesn't go first. You're doing the radius of Jupiter cubed divided by the radius of the Earth cubed. You don't have to use the four-thirds, and you don't have to use the pi because those are going to cancel. Does that make sense? Yeah, don't use the rounded volume because then you're getting a non-exact answer. So I could fit two more Earths than what you were typing. <laughs> but isn't that crazy that... 1,394 Earths would fit into Jupiter. And the Earth, it feels so big to us. Jupiter is huge. That's the end of the story. All right, which planet, dun, 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 has a surface area of 2,621 pi million meters? Albert already knows it. How would we go about this? First, we would write the formula for surface area, right? Correct. 4 pi r squared. And it's going to equal 2, 6, 2, 1 pi. The pi's are going to cancel. So you're really, you're taking that number, you're dividing it by 4, and then you're square rooting it. And then you just find the one that's the closest to that. 25.6 is what I got for the radius. 25.6. And then you have to know the names of your planets. Can we name all the planets? Mercury. Oh, man. Venus. Oh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. So, yes. The answer is Uranus, 25.6. Okay, let's go to our homework answers. 
you were to do the evens on your homework. Going once, going twice. Sold to number six being the only problem I am working. All right, let's look at number six. Oh, okay, so number six, that's called a composite solid. And we've got a cylinder and plus a cone, right? Cylinder plus cone. So did you want me to do the surface area or the volume of number six? So I actually have these two figures with me. So if we're going to find the surface area of this thing, then what are we really finding? Remember, surface area is what's on the surface. It's what you can touch. What I can't touch is the bottom of this cone that's not on the surface and the top of this cylinder that is not on the surface. So I'm, yeah, LA plus LA plus 1B because I can touch one of the circles. So we're going to find the LA of this, the LA of this, and then B. So we get out our handy dandy formula chart and we look at the LA of a cylinder. Well, let's do the cone first. Pi RL, the LA of a cylinder, 2 pi r h, and then we know that the base is pi r squared. So we'll just throw it all out there. So we need an r, we need an h, and we need an l. We need those three things. So um, it looks like we have all of those, except for the radius, but that is a Pythagorean triple, 6, 8, 10. So every time I see an R, I'm going to put 8, pi times 8. When I see L, I'll put a 10, pi times 8 times 10, plus 2, pi, 8. This is the cylinder, so 17, plus pi, R squared. So when we go to our calculator, we're going to type everything in except for pi. So we're going to do 8 times 10 plus 2 times 8 times 17, sorry, plus 8 squared. And we get, it says 416 pi, yep, 416 pi inches squared. So really the only thing we were missing on that one was the radius and we did need to know that we weren't finding the bottom of the cone and we weren't finding the top of the cylinder. Okay, Tahani, you asked for 14. You want me to do 14? Is this the same 14 as y'all's? I feel like this file looks like it's an old file. Alright, so let's look at 14. Um, it says we've got a right cone. And that's about all we know. All right. So we know in a cone that there's always a relationship between the radius, the height, and the slant height. The radius, the height, and the slant height always form a right triangle. So if we know the slant height is 13 and the height is 12, have you memorized that Pythagorean triple? Surely, right? 5, 12, 13. 5, 12, 13. So our radius is 5, and then we can just go from there. We can just follow our formula chart. The LA is pi RL, so we're just doing 5 times 13. 65 pi. The SA is you take the LA, take the LA and you add to it pi r squared. So we're just doing 65 plus 25 pretty much. So that's where we get the 90 pi. And the volume, we know it is pi r squared base times height and three cones fit into a cylinder so we divide by three. So 25 times 12 divided by three. 
and that's a beautiful volume. 100 pi. Good. All right, today's lesson is going to be a reminder of a lesson that we already learned in the similarity unit. So um, just going back and forth between 1D, 2D, and 3D. And um, when we're going back and forth, we're keeping in mind that our figures have to be similar. So everything that we learned today doesn't work if the figures are not similar. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, you remember. All right, so anything that's 1D, perimeter, radius, height, scale factor, anything that's 1D is A to B. Anything that's 2D, area, surface area, is A squared to B squared, and anything that's 3D, which is only volume, it's the only thing, is A cubed to B cubed. This does say example two, but it's our example one. Sorry about that. I think I deleted example one because I didn't like it. All right, this is going to be a short and sweet lesson. The edges of a large cube, so we've got a cube, like a dice, are four times longer than the edges of a small cube. How many times greater is the volume of the large cube? The long way to answer this would be, oh, I could find the volume of the first cube and the volume of the second cube, and I could divide. Or we could use what we know about perimeter and area volume ratios, and we could just use our ratios to help us. So I'm going to draw a picture, but you would not actually have to draw a picture when you're solving this. I just kind of want to make sure we're all on the same page. So we've got a cube there. And um, if I call the edges, let's call it S for side. And then I'm going to take each side and I'm going to quadruple the sides. And if I quadruple the sides, now the sides are 4s. So that cube just got bigger. Its width got bigger, its height got bigger, and its length got bigger. All three dimensions got four times bigger. So the volume is not four times as big, and that's what people are tempted to choose. They're like, oh, you multiply the side by 4, so the volume is 4 times bigger. But that's not the case. When you multiply this by 4, 4 is the scale factor. If you want to turn that into volume, you have to raise it to the third. So the answer is not 4. The answer is 4 cubed, which is the volume, can you tell, gets 64 times bigger because the length gets quadrupled, the width gets quadrupled, and the height gets quadrupled. So believe it or not, the answer is D. Next example. Do y'all remember from our last test the chocolates problem? Do you remember the chocolates? And it was like, if the new dimensions are this by this. How many chocolates will fit? This doll one kind of reminds me of the chocolate one. Taha, you're confused that we took um, four and we raised it to the three? We just took, this is four is 1D, and we want to make it 3D because of this word right here. How do you make something that's 1D into 3D? You cube it. You raise it to the third. Okay, sorry. Ying Yu bought a rectangular box to display her doll collection. I collected thimbles growing up. That's really random. Anyways, she decided to exchange the box for a similar one that had double its dimensions. How does the volume of the larger rectangular box compare to the volume of the smaller one? So this one is actually nothing like the chocolates problem because we weren't looking for volume in the chocolates problem. So let's, let's pull out the only information we need. We need that information and we need that information. That's all we need. We need the word double and it's the dimensions that were doubled so that's just 1D and we want to know what happened to the volume. So this is just like the example we just did. That shadow box has a length, a width, and a height. You're going to double the length, you're going to double the width, and you're going to double the height. How much bigger is the volume going to be? So you take 
times 2, that's a 1D, that's a scale factor, it's 1D, and you cube it to turn it into volume. So the volume of the new shadow box would be... Eight times as large, is that okay? Double the length, double the width, double the height. Two times two times two. Eight times as large, good. Next one, we've got two vases. And they're similar and they have those surface areas. Step one, what's their similarity ratio? Step two, I give you the height and you find the height of the other one. In this lesson, what I need you to keep in mind is we don't care about what shape that vase is. It's not about the shape of the vase. It's not even about these formulas at all. It's about are we in 1D or 2D or 3D. That's all it's about. So their surface areas are 36 to 100. And that is 2D because that's a surface area. The first thing it's asking for is their similarity ratio. That just means, hey guys, what's the scale factor? Because it's not 100 to 36. It's not the scale factor. What I first thing I notice is that those values are 2D. And I need it to be 1D. How do you go from 2D to 1D? You square root, right? Now you've got two options. You can reduce and then square root, or you can square root and reduce. It's totally up to you. To me, those are perfect squares, so let's just go ahead and square root because I can do that in my head. 6 to 10. That cannot be our final answer because it's not reduced. So there we go. 3 to 5. Very good. Okay. Now we know their similarity ratio. That's their 1D ratio. Now we can use that to find part B. I give you the height of the large vase and you find the height of the smaller one. The height, height, is 1D. So guess what? We get to use what we just found. 3 is to 5 as... Why did I put 15 in the denominator? Because it's the height of the larger vase. So we don't need to do any square rooting or squaring or cubing because they're both 1D. This is 1D and height is 1D. So we can cross multiply or we can just use common sense and the answer is 9. So what do we do in this problem? It asks us for two things. So for the first thing it asks us for, we had to square root to undo area. And then the second thing we did was just set up a proportion. Okay. Last example. Well, actually second to last. Okay. Sorry, I'm an avid coffee drinker. Y'all probably are not yet because you're still in middle school. But maybe one day you will drink a lot of coffee. So pretend that this says your Gatorade thermos instead of coffee thermos. Um, so yours holds three cups of coffee. Your friend, so this is yours, and it holds three cups of coffee. Your friend's coffee thermos is twice as tall, but half the radius of yours. How much coffee does theirs hold? Whose thermos wins? Whose holds more? Do you want to be short and wide, or do you want to be tall and skinny? Not you, your thermos. So think about this, so I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. Let's start talking about this so that you have time to take your quiz. Um, so, if we're talking about holding coffee, are we talking about surface area or volume? Volume, totally. So let's write down the volume of a cylinder. The volume of the cylinder is base times height. It's pi r squared times the height, right? Now, if I call this r, and I call this H, what would I call them over here? Is that okay with you? Twice the height, but half the radius. Okay. Let's see what happens when we plug all of this into our volume formula. So the volume of our coffee cup this one's ours. Ours is the short one. 
That's the volume of ours. The volume of our friends, the volume of our friends is pi r squared h. Pi r squared h. So ours hasn't changed. Let's clean theirs up a little bit. What is one half squared? One fourth. Clean it up a little bit more. What happens when I combine that and that? Two divided by four, two fourths. So there's the volume of ours versus the volume of theirs. Whose volume's bigger? Oh no, I lost you. Sorry, I'm coming back. Sorry, I lost you. I'm coming back, I know. So, when you half the radius and double the height, your volume is only half as big. Do you know why? Because in the formula for volume, H counts once, once, and R counts twice. There's two R's, R times R. So don't mess with the radius. <laughs> so you can double the height all you want. But if you half the radius, the radius is where you get more bang for your buck. Because in the volume formula, there's two radiuses. So that's like you're halving it and you're halving it again. So you're really fourthing it. That's not a word. Anyways, moral of the story. If you would like to have more volume in your cup, you would want to double the radius. You would not want to double the height because in the formula for volume, you're squaring radius. There's two radiuses and there's only one height. That's not what I'm saying, Adriana. I'm just saying if you're going to do something to your thermos, if you want to make it larger and you're going to double one of the dimensions, don't pick the height. Pick the radius to double. I mean, mine's tall and skinny, and I love mine because I can hold it better. But if you're talking about more volume, then yeah, you're going to need a, more, a bigger radius if you want more volume. All right, start on your quiz.